Now for the past 30 days, I've been using the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 9 here for 2021 as pretty much my daily driver, putting it through its paces, testing performance, battery life, the display, all the thermals, the metrics, everything involved with this laptop. And I gotta say, still one of my favorites here for 2021, and I'll explain why in this review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 9. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo, I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit was provided by Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, the Core i5 model with the Full HD Plus version that I do show in this video as well was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Lenovo. Pricing starts at $14,0280, and I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy it. Now, they will be running sales for Memorial Day weekend, so make sure you hit that link below to find out the latest pricing. The Core i5 model comes with a plain black lid that we normally see with ThinkPads, but if you do opt for that UHC Plus display, that comes with a carbon fiber weave, giving it a little bit more classy touch. And here they are together. You can see the weave on the left and the plain black on the right. I think they both look great. It just if you want a little bit more pizzazz, go with that UHC Plus model. Now on the left is the Core i7 model. It's the Core i7 1165G7 with integrated Iris Xe graphics running that UHD Plus display. On the right is the Core i5 1135G7. That has the Full HD Plus display. We'll get into the differences between the two in just a little bit. Now to put a size into perspective, here it is with its smaller sibling, the X1 Nano that I recently reviewed. Link will be in the description below for those that didn't check it out. It's a great portable laptop in its own right. As expected, the X1 Carbon Gen 9 has a bigger footprint than the X1 Nano. But of course, these all pale in comparison to its bigger brother, the X1 Extreme Gen 3. Now, I went over the ports in the unboxing video, but for those that didn't see it, on the left side, you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Benefit of Thunderbolt 4, you can drive multiple 4K monitors or one 8K monitor if you want. You also get a USB-A port, 3.2 Gen 1 port, and finally an HDMI port to round out all the ports on the left side. On the right side is a 3.5 millimeter headphone microphone combo jack and a second USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port and a Kensington lock port. And for those wondering, those two Thunderbolt 4 ports are also USB 4 ports as well. Notably missing, there's no micro SD card or full size SD card slot on this laptop. Now, I was fortunate enough to check out both the Core i5 model, which I purchased myself, and my review unit sent from Lenovo running the Core i7, both 11th gen Intel Tiger Lake processors with integrated Iris Xe graphics. And as you can see from the benchmarks, the Core i7 did, of course, better than the Core i5, but the Core i5 certainly held its own when it comes to the performance. Now, the Core i5 model had 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, whereas my review unit with the Core i7 had 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X. 4x ram but of course these are not gaming laptops but you can play the occasional game if you lower the settings i found the sweet spot to be 1080p low settings you'll get playable frame rates on some popular titles and performance was excellent for everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, and consuming media. Watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube work like a charm on these laptops. But when I ran my Prime 95 stress test, it would turbo boost up to 3.6 gigahertz with a core temperature of around 98 degrees Celsius. Then I would notice it would drop down to 2.8 gigahertz with a core temperature of 81 degrees Celsius, and that's fine. But every now and then I noticed it would drop as low as 399 megahertz and fluctuate between 54 and 60 degrees Celsius. Now, it didn't happen all the time. It would happen every now and then, but hopefully a firmware update can fix this. Now, I only noticed this under extreme heavy load. My normal everyday task wasn't affected. Now, the fans will kick in under heavy load, but I didn't notice them to be overly loud. Actually, I thought they were pretty quiet. I thought I did a good job when it comes to fan noise. And as far as the surface temperatures are concerned, it stayed relatively cool, although you'll notice it got a bit warm at the top of the keyboard when it was under heavy load. But otherwise, surface temperatures were actually pretty good. 
Now, I opened this laptop up in my unboxing video, but for those that didn't see it, it's super easy. All you need to do is loosen the captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. It's that easy. Now, once inside, you'll notice that 57 watt hour battery will get to the battery life and charging times in just a little bit. You'll also notice that it has two fans for cooling. If you look at last year's Gen 8, it only had one fan, so that's a little bit of a change. We'll talk about thermal performance in just a little bit. Now, unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade it, but you can configure this with up to 32 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM. But what is upgradable by the user is the SSD. Now, my Core i5 model, the entry-level model that I purchased, had 256 gigs of SSD storage, which had some excellent reads and writes, especially for a 256 gigabyte SSD drive. And the review unit that Lenovo sent over has 512 gigabyte SSD drive. And here is how it did on the reads and writes. As you can see, excellent results once again. It has Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.1. Now, unfortunately, the Wi-Fi card is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that. But the good news is they're both working really well and as you'd expect. Now, there is the optional 5G slash LTE on this. And that's great for the business executive on the go. All right, let's talk about the display. We'll start off with that UHD Plus display that Lenovo sent over. It has a resolution of 3840 by 2400. That means it has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, one of the great new features here with Gen 9. Now, it also has really deep blacks, very vibrant colors, and it is also color accurate with an excellent 0.63 Delta E score. And of course, lower is better, meaning this is a very, very color accurate display. It also covers the color gamut extremely well, 100% percent srgb 90 percent adobe rgb 95 percent of the dci p3 wide color gamut and 86 percent ntsc making this an excellent choice for content creators to do lightroom photoshop and of course video editing and here is the Full HD Plus model that I purchased with a resolution of 1920 by 1200, sporting that same 16 to 10 aspect ratio. This is also an IPS display, and it's also a matte display, so you don't get any unnecessary glare or reflections, and that's really good when you want to get work done. Now, at 402 nits, it's a bright display in its own right, good for both indoor and outdoor use. It's got really deep blacks, very good white points, excellent contrast, and it has a low Delta E score of 2.09. I'd like to see it below 2. This is a little bit above not quite as good as the uhd plus model when it comes to color accuracy but it does a pretty good job of covering the color gamut in its own right with a 95 percent srgb 71 percent adobe rgb 71 percent of the dci p3 wide color gamut and 66 percent ntsc making it a pretty good choice for content creators to do lightroom photoshop and of course video editing now, one thing all these panels have in common is the fact that they have low blue light emissions, meaning you're less likely to have any eye strain on these monitors, and that's always good. And here are the two different models together. On the left is the UHD Plus. On the right is the Full HD Plus. As you can see, the UHD Plus is brighter. It's a little bit more sharp and more vibrant than the Full HD Plus, which is pretty good in those departments as well. So it's just a matter of personal preference. If you want better battery life, of course, go with that Full HD Plus. It won't draw as much power, less pixels to push. So this is the front-facing camera on the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 9 here for 2021. This is the UHD Plus version that I'm taking a look at. I also looked at the Full HD Plus model as well. Now, as far as this camera is concerned, this is a 720p, 30 frames per second webcam. What do you think about it for Zoom or for any of your work from home needs for video conferencing? What do you think about the video quality and the audio quality of the internal mics? Now, one thing to note, this is also a Windows Hello camera. It's an infrared camera. That means you could log in with Windows Hello with face recognition. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Now, this has human presence detection, which automatically locks your device. When you move away, it automatically logs you in when it detects your presence. This is a great feature to have, and it really worked well. And it also has the Think Shutter switch, allowing you to turn off your webcam, giving you more security and privacy. Now, the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner, and it worked well. Setup was easy and registered my finger each and every time I used it, adding another layer of security. 
All right, let's talk about the battery life. Now, this sports a 57-watt-hour battery, and the Core i5 model with that Full HD Plus display did 14 hours and 2 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, whereas the Core i7 model with the higher-resolution display, the UHD Plus, did 7 hours and 48 minutes. So, obviously, if you want more battery life, you want more longevity in terms of that endurance, you're going to want to choose the Full HD Plus model. Now, of course, your mileage may vary depending on what you're doing with the laptop, so that will affect battery life, so please keep that in mind. Now, if you do need to plug in, the supplied 65-watt USB-C power adapter does support rapid charge, and you'll get a full charge in around 90 minutes, which is really good and fast. And as I mentioned in the unboxing video, there are some changes when it comes to the keyboard. The speakers are now moved to the sides of the keyboard, as well as the power button now doubles as a fingerprint scanner. And both are really welcome changes in my opinion. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Now let's talk about the keyboard, and I do really like it. That's one of the best features on this laptop, and it's no surprise ThinkPad keyboards are the best in the business, in my opinion. Now Lenovo claims it still retains a 1.5 millimeters of key travel, although I felt it a little bit more shallow than I normally would expect on this type of keyboard. It is still excellent nonetheless, still my favorite out there. It has great tactile feedback and is very comfortable for typing for extended periods of time. Great for productivity work. It is also a spill resistant keyboard. So if you spill water or coffee or whatever on it, you have a chance for this to survive and you can't ask for more in my opinion with such a nice laptop, expensive laptop, you want to protect your investment. It did now has a bigger touchpad over the previous model, and it is very responsive. Two-finger scrolling is buttery smooth, and all the gestures work as you'd expect. It's a precision touchpad that is really excellent. And of course, because this is a ThinkPad, it has the track point, which is another great pointing device or great way to navigate through the OS. Some people may like it, some may not. And to be honest, I don't use it as much as I used to, but it's there if you want it, and it is an inherent part of the ThinkPad DNA. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. And I love the ability to put the screen back 180 degrees, as you see here. So that gives you the ability to get the best viewing angle each and every time. That's really great. And when it comes to the audio, this sports the Dolby Atmos speaker system, and it has two upward firing speakers, as I mentioned, and two downward firing subwoofers, which give it really good sound, good mids, good volume, and there is some bass. One of the best business laptops when it comes to the audio that I've seen to date. That's been pretty good. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 9 here for 2021? And I'm absolutely loving this laptop. It's one of my favorite business laptops out there, and it retains that title here in 2021. A nice move to the 16 to 10 aspect ratio. Great ThinkPad keyboard. Once again, it's a spill-resistant keyboard, which I absolutely love. Love the long battery life, especially out of that Full HD Plus model. You get 14 plus hours. If you're going to go with a UHD Plus, you're looking anywhere from seven to eight hours of course depending on what you're doing you get dual thunderbolt 4 usb 4 support optional 5g slash lte thin and light design easy to take with you on the go the negatives here, RAM, Wi-Fi are not user upgradable. There's no SD card reader. There's no LAN port, although you can get all these on a dongle if you have to do it. And of course, that 720p webcam leaves much to be desired. Here in 2021, we expect better. We need a minimum of 1080p. Hopefully the next generation will see an improved webcam. But there are no real deal breakers here, ladies and gentlemen. This is my editor's choice for the 14-inch clamshell business laptop here for 2021, making the X1 Carbon Gen 9 definitely worth your money. So what do you think about the X1 Carbon Gen 9 here for 2021? Gotta say, love the move to the 16 to 10 aspect ratio. Love the fact that it still has a great keyboard, although slightly less travel in my opinion, although Lenovo saying it's still 1.5 millimeters of key travel, slightly less than the previous model, but still great nonetheless. I like the performance out of the Core i5 as well as the Core i7. Now, as far as the thermals are concerned, everything is fine, but every now and then I noticed it would really dip down. I think a firmware update 
would remedy that. It doesn't get overly hot as far as the surface temperatures. As far as that performance in the Core i7, excellent, as you know, with that 1165G7. The display options are great on this. I like that Full HD Plus with that matte display, no unnecessary glare or reflections. And then, of course, you can go with the upgraded UHD Plus display for even more color accuracy and more coverage of the color gamut. Those colors on that simply pop off the display. It is beautiful. It is excellent. Now, as far as the battery life on this, uh, obviously, if you need more longevity, go with that Core i5 model, getting more than 14 hours on my continuous web surfing test. The UHD Plus model, Model obviously has more pixels to push, takes up more power, and that got about seven to eight hours. Of course, that'll depend on what you're doing with the laptop, so your mileage may vary. Keep that in mind. Now, I'll leave a link in the description below for the latest pricing. Now, Memorial Day weekend is upon us. I expect to see sales from Lenovo, so you might be able to pick up the X1 Carbon Gen 9 for a great price. So keep your eyes open to that link below for the latest pricing. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.